moving on from this, this is a really strange one to kind of mention, but I thought I had to mention it. Um, this is not really this guy's fault, but more so a kind of um, criticism overall of sneaker culture and just the way things drop and how things are seeded and marketing it's just annoying for me personally as a somewhat retired and reformed sneakerhead because i've had a real love hate relationship with the fucking scene and the industry it gets on my nerves but i just can't seem to let it go <laughs> or you know every time it kind of draws me back in kind of thing and um one of the things that's kind of really annoyed me within i feel like the last few years it felt like there's been a real kind of upsurge in, I would say, what would you call them? Like influence, like sneaker influencers, right? Or just influencers in general. There's been a real uptick in the amount of them that exist nowadays. And I guess if you're a brand, you know, having learned from Gary V, essentially, you know, influencers are really underpaid for what they do because they have a very dedicated fan base of people who for the most part are very involved and into what that influencer does. They follow them for whatever reason they want to follow them for a vlog, for fashion, for inspiration, just to look at them, wherever it may be. So if you're a brand and you want to tie yourself next to an influencer, you're essentially guaranteeing that that whole subset of people that follow that influencer are going to be in completely enamored with what you're offering, whether it's a car, whether it's a toothbrush, whether it's a camera, or in this case, a pair of sneakers. But I also feel like these brands, what they've done with these sneakers, with these influencers is that in order to kind of glitzy up the relationship or to make it worthwhile or to really make it make waves on social media, they've kind of done away with just giving influencers shoes early, which is what influencers usually used to get, which makes a lot of sense. Because even myself, when I was somewhat involved in the scene and I had a little bit of clout from the time I was working at the Nike store, or I was able to kind of, you know, siphon off a pair for myself when the delivery came in. I knew for myself, one of the advantages of being tapped in is that you got your pair early. Now, for me personally, I've never been the kind of person who wants to get a pair early and free. I don't care about that. I think I spoke to somebody recently about it when it comes to like yesterday stuff at clubs. When I go to nightclubs and stuff, my main prerogative isn't to get into free, isn't to get isn't to get in for free. I know some people love to go out to nightclubs just to kind of go out there for free and to kind of get free drinks and hang out and stuff. But I've never been that kind of guy. I'd rather stay at home than go to a nightclub broke. But when it comes to sneakers, I've always wanted the ability to have the access to buy them because sneakers especially limited edition ones for whatever reason they've created this artificial scarcity despite the industry being multi-billion dollar industry probably in the double triple digits now at the moment and despite everyone and their nan knowing about sneakers nowadays and reselling or whatnot they still kind of try to maintain this aura that sneakers are limited and they can't make any more and they do this by basically creating artificial scarcity by purposely only making a set amount and then giving most of them away to influencers and stuff for free to wear. And I feel like it kind of is annoying because instead of just sending them regular pairs to get ahead of time, they sometimes send them shoes that the regular public can't get a hold of. And it's something that's always existed even in my, in my era in terms of friends and family pairs of shoes. But the friends and family pairs of shoes were so limited that it wasn't even bothering getting worried or pissed off that you couldn't get a pair but nowadays a friends and families pairs like this example courtesy of hypebeast regarding zach beer's asics gel keanu 14 collab these flipping friends and families are limited to 200 what kind of friends and family have you heard that's limited to 200 pairs that's a lot of pairs and now these shoes i feel like are really nice i feel like a lot of people will be into them um they're essentially an asics um gel Keanu model with a it looks like a sky blue kind of white upper on the front and then it's got this amazing kind of black mud guard here at the back um or heel sorry heel guard or whatever heel cup whatever you call it here at the back with white laces and it's got this amazing yellow um sort of fluorescent kind of inside bubble going thing and a kind of off-white missile but essentially the makeup of it is really nice in terms of the color combination he did a really good collab for somebody again who i wouldn't you know deemed to be a sneakerhead he put together a really really nice shoe but yeah whatever it may be this is a nice shoe i would imagine a lot of people will be into it and wanting to buy it but you can't because it's only available for his friends and family but then they're advertising everywhere which is something that i've never understood and really kind of gets on my nerves i get the marketing aspect of it but if you're not going to release it to the public for, for everyone to kind of have a, a chance to buy it why are you showing it to us and why are you putting all this marketing dollars behind it, it just doesn't make any sense unless this is a model that hasn't been released yet and they want to spearhead it by kind of pushing Zach Beer to do the first calibration and an iteration of this will come out that looks kind of similar maybe that's the case of it but I just find it really annoying 
you find it a lot with um cactus plant flower market collabs as well that that diamond dunk one that she did that wasn't really available in many places and you see bari wearing it in some terrible outfit looking like he's about to explode from all the flipping fried food he's eating it's just annoying i want to see more people have access to this sort of stuff and it's not just about me it's about everybody in general because i feel like the access to trainers and the lack of access to it is really bizarre the fact that you can buy a limit no, in fact, the fact you can buy like an in-demand iPhone on day of release or on the next day with ease, but then you can't buy a really limited edition sneaker is really retarded, in my opinion. I, I don't care the word, not meant to use it, but that's the only way to describe it. It absolutely makes no sense to me, especially now that legitimately everybody and their mum knows about sneaker selling. You know, people there's there's sneaker resellers out there who are under the age of sixteen. I'd assume now there's probably ten year olds just you know slinging flipping sneakers to your you know to your favorite basketball player out there. At the moment this stuff exists people are creating bots they're on discord and stuff whatever it may be it's a big industry now the fact that they can't make enough shoes to satisfy demand is something that will never ever make sense to me ever 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 and the fact that they will purposely make limited edition shoes and then send it to one of the most followed kids out there one of the most clouded up kids out there a kid that most people will kind of know who he's who he is or what his face is and then tend to give it to all his friends and then all his friends share it on their social media platform with all the hundreds of thousands of millions of people that they follow but then none of their f fans can actually buy it is a real crying shame it really is this is that the this is like even worse than blue balls this is like another level of blue balls and if you go on his instagram you actually see on this kid's instagram stories that he sent him out to all his cool friends that are just doing cool shit with them but there's no one normal quote-unquote person that's got a pair of them everybody on here that's got a pair has either got a tick a, a verified thing next to their name or they're just you know living life doing the greatest of all they want to do like look heron does the thanks bro proud friend like all right it's i always i always find it funny as well like all, all these guys seem to have friends that are doing cool and interesting things they never seem to have like regular friends that they want to promote on their stories it's never talking about your friend that's working as a bus boy never your friend that's working as a bar back never is your friend that's working as a receptionist never is your friend that's working as a nursery teacher it's always your friend that makes cool things that's your friend so proud my friend my friend why aren't you proud of your friend who got given the keys to the retail store that he was that he was um the weekend assistant at the other day why isn't that a proud thing it's always proud about the cool things isn't it this fucking fury infuriating i really do find it super annoying but whatever in it like gq articles about it but then you can't actually purchase the thing itself it's absolutely redacted it really really is and it gets on my absolute nerves i hate everything about it but again they keep getting me involved and i can't let go of this shit i really do wish i could let go